Fred Curley uh, came out. He is now going to be no longer a part of ASICs. Uh, he and ASICs mutually agree to part ways. Uh, and this happened a little bit ago, but was released right after the uh, the NYC Grand Prix. Um, what were what are your thoughts on this? You know, it's happening two weeks before the trials. Uh, a couple of months, you know, 90 days before the, the Olympics or 60 days before the Olympics. Like what were you thinking when, when you saw that situation, you know, going down uh, on Sunday? When I saw it, I had a theory. You want, you want to hear the theory? Yeah. Okay. So Fred, we all know is a very independent mind, very independent person, very that way of thinking it seems. And as a brand ambassador or a sponsored athlete, a lot of times you have agendas or content or ideas pushed on you from the person sponsoring you, right? A lot of times, the more money they're giving you, the more they want of you, the more they ask of you. And I could see this being a thing of principles between Fred and ASICS. ASICS wanted Fred to do certain things. Fred wasn't comfortable with doing these certain things and gave pushback. ASICS might have pushed back and forth, but I... I see Fred as somebody that when they give their word, they're going to stand on their word. And if they're not going for something, they're not going for something. Now, that's kind of how I see it. And, that, and it rifted because they mutually parted ways. I, I saw something about spikes and he, he couldn't like the spikes and he couldn't get into the spikes. And like, I don't know how valid. I mean, you probably have a different source. Like you probably have legitimate sources. So I'm not going to say too much. But that's what I think is more the influence than the spikes. But what do you think though? Yeah. Um, when it comes to the spikes, so I was going to actually lean on with you a little bit here because uh, maybe you have some insider knowledge of like, my thought is if I am a track athlete, if I'm an athlete at all, and especially in track and field where the shoes you wear is so, they're so important to your like comfortability and the way that you're going to perform. If I'm Fred, during this entire process, I'm, I have to practice in these spikes. I'll be like, nah, let me like, before I'm making my decision, I got to be comfortable in these shoes. And so like, Hey, I'm going to do, you know, a week's worth of practice in Pumas, like off on my own a week's worth of practice in, in ASICs or whatever it is to make sure that I'm comfortable in the shoes that I'm wearing. Cause if this is going to be, you know, a deal that I'm signing that, you know, I have to wear these for the next four or five years, you know, the remainder of my career, if I'm not comfortable in them, then I wouldn't do it. Like one, I don't know if that's like a thing that y'all like that y'all do. Like, do you know if that's something where, you know, before people are signing, you're trying on shoes, you're, you're testing things out. Is, is that even accurate? Or is that like, nah, that's not really a part of the, the pro side of things. I think it sounds good in theory. And if you have it that, if you have it like that, where you have every company coming at you throwing bread, I think then you can kind of do that. But in a situation like that, let's say ASICS comes to your door and says, hey, look, $11.5 million for four years. Where are these spikes? 99% of people are going to be like, okay, I'm not going to, I don't care how these spikes feel. I'm making $11 million wear them. Like, I'll be okay. You know, like, I think it's kind of like, like that. But in theory, like, it makes more sense to be like, yo, but these are my feet and this is important for me to keep performing well. So before I do sign, I should probably test these out. Like, that should be a thing, but I don't think that people would be doing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, so if that's the truth, like that's, that, that's the case it makes sense. I understand it. But yeah. Like that would have been my, like from an outsider, if it was the spikes, if it truly is like, that's why I'm kind of leaning towards what you're saying. Cause like, if it truly is like the spikes, then like as an athlete, like as somebody that's signing a contract, if I didn't test something out before I signed it, the only person I can blame is myself. And then like, it's not, and like now it is a mutually agreed upon thing. So maybe he was like, Hey, I didn't test these out. It didn't work for me. And I can't wear them because my feet are just, it's, it's going to become a problem. I might get injured. I might get, I might get hurt. Hey, I'm not going to do it. So maybe that's why it was a, a mutually agreed upon thing of like, Hey, I'm not going to do these because it's not working with my feet. But like, I feel like he's, he mentioned that he's so invested in his body and in and, and the business. Like I, I don't know. It, maybe it's just not a thing. And maybe you, you can't test spikes out. And I'm just, I got pie in the sky, an idea of what stuff looks like. So then that, that leads to what I, what, what you mentioned of like, you know, is it, 
creative differences of the business of like, hey, maybe they envisioned he would be, you know, more wanting to talk to the media, more vocal. ASICS has a lot of, uh, you know, most of their athletes are international athletes. So maybe he wanted them to do more international type things that he wasn't looking to. Like he, he's, he did those back to back meets in China. Maybe like, you know, he's doing all this travel and elsewhere he doesn't want to do it. But yeah, it's, it's funky to me uh, of, you know, you're making this decision two weeks before the trials and you're 29 years old, bro, if you don't make the team, it's going to be pretty dang hot. Like that could be a challenge to get another sponsor to sign an athlete who just dropped another shoe sponsor uh, two weeks before the trials. Um, and you're 29. Like I, I can envision that's going to be real tough to get the next shoe company to see it. Cause they see all this stuff going on. Like I envision it, it, it'll be a challenge, but hopefully it's the right decision for him. Time shall tell my brother. Yeah. So Time will tell. we'll see. I, I mean, shoot, I think um, I could see him in the back with Nike. I just had to think about who they got on their roster. I could see him in the back with Nike. Going back. Yeah. My bet, my, uh, my bet was uh, I'm thinking new balance, man. I'm thinking, okay. uh, I'm thinking he hit some new balance. Cause like, I'm guessing, hey, you leave Nike. I don't know. Maybe Nike's got a, a sour taste in their mouth. Maybe it's like, hey, you know, you ain't do all that. But like, it's because with New Balance, I'm trying to think what male sprinters they got Trayvon Bramell right now. Mm -hmm. Vernon. 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 He's and he's more in the four. So they, they oh, got you're talking about Prince. It's just, yeah, yeah, I think it's just Trayvon. Yeah. So it's like, hey, they could. They could. Uh, I mean, he wore the Pumas at the thing, so maybe that sign, like, hey, you're wearing Pumas at this meet. Maybe it's sign that you know he's doing that. But that was wild, man. That that was a crazy scenario. So 